Hello and welcome to the third in the class series on Ayurveda awareness. And this class is about simple self-care with Ayurveda. And we're going to be talking about each of the doshas um, remedies, simple remedies, and we'll go more into the food since that is such an important aspect the food um, that we take into our bodies. So I'm going to start with a slideshow that's generally about the self-care techniques for each of the doshas. And then we'll do another slideshow, which is more colorful because it has lots of food pictures. So I hope you're not too hungry when we watch it. But meanwhile, I just want to start with three ohms to get us in tune. Oh. Oh. All right, let's share the slides. And if you remember to, if you want to put the slides on your whole screen so they're easier to read, that would be a great idea. And on the um, on the screen, there we go. A little technical difficulty. So, simple self care with Ayurveda. And I'm Tara Raphael. Ayurveda practitioner, former midwife, and Maya abdominal therapist. So Vata, you learned about in our previous two webinars, which I implore you to watch before you go through this one, unless you already know about Vata, Pitta, and Kapha. Um, so when you find in your check-in each day that you need to soothe Vata, these are some of the guidelines to follow. So regular, moderate exercise in moderate amounts. Vata becomes ex, um, excited and more of it if you over-exercise. And to know how to, um, whether you're over-exercising, so you should just be starting to break a sweat. And that's considered um, that you've exercised enough unless it's a very hot day anyways. <laughs> um, so a lot when you're vata, you will become more vata, more dried out. So you have to, when you exercise, be sure you're getting enough fluids for everyone, but especially for vatas. And vatas should avoid things like hot yoga, which make you sweat a lot. Um, so doing more Hatha yoga, where there's more, less jumping. You don't, also don't want to do like Ashtanga has a lot of jumping in it. If you take a class where the teacher is telling you to jump, but you know your Vata, don't jump. Just move gently and take good care of yourself. You don't have to do exactly what the teacher says. If you know better is for you. Taking warm, relaxing baths is soothing to vata because the warmth and the relaxation. Sipping warm water throughout the day. So you want to drink pure water. And warm is better than cool. Listening to a stream or a fountain. And so that's where having those things in your home or your office can be very relaxing for vata just the sound of water. Um, for aromatherapy, <coughs> excuse me, there are very many kinds of um, 
of aromatherapy that are good for vata, some of the ones that are good are sandalwood, camphor, wintergreen, vanilla, and musk. Those are more grounding kinds of, of scents. Um, you can use bot music. It should be calm, nurturing, and grounding music. And you can use fear dispelling mantras, which are Ram, which also helps with digestion, Hrim, Shrim, Sham, or Hum. Hum. You want to avoid loud rock music or loud noises, which um, disturb vata over time. So, um, with colors, most colors are good. It's good to avoid lots of dark or heavy colors. And there are gems that are good. Emerald is great. Jade, peridot set in gold. Yellow sapphire, topaz, citrine, and other yellow stones set in gold. Ruby or garnet can help with circulation and energy. And gem elixirs are good um, as well as flower essences to deal with um, vata's emotional. Now, this mentions the fear dispelling mantras. So vata should definitely avoid scary movies and amusement park rides, things that get your adrenaline going because a lot um, of some the frequently vata problems are related to the adrenal glands. So this one I've highlighted because the slow, gentle self-massage with sesame or almond oil or getting a massage from someone else regularly is a very important practice for soothing vata because the oil helps to create a container of the skin. It helps the dryness but it also helps to stimulate gently the whole body and help the person ground in the body. And um, there's a whole regime of self-care and we'll talk more about that when we talk in um, le class five, we're gonna be talking about Ayurvedic routines and we'll go through some of these um, things like self-massage in that class. It's good for vatas to have time alone and over, avoid overworking and too much socializing, studying a lot. Um, these things will increase vata. Getting regular sleep whenever possible. So going to bed before 10 p.m. earlier if possible and get enough sleep Vatas often wake early in the morning and by doing vata soothing things and learning to control the mind, you may be able to change your path. Not necessarily an easy thing or a permanent fix. When the weather changes, so for instance, um, this morning I'm quite vata, um, even though I, um, got enough sleep last night, probably because, first of all, I was so excited and realized that I wanted to make a slideshow, and I made this whole slideshow this morning. So being on the computer and just rushing and, and putting off breakfast later than usual got me out of my routine. So you may have noticed already that compared to the other talks that I may be more vata it kind of jumping around and changing words and so forth. I'll do my best to soothe that but talking itself oh, oh, for an, a long time can be vata provoking because it dries the throat and it's stimulating. Drinking nourishing herbal infusions daily especially oat straw. And if you go to my YouTube channel, which is Wise Womanhood, um, there's a video that I made about how to make a nourishing herbal infusion. And oat straw is the best for vata 
because it's an herb that is very vata soothing. And you want to get the tastes that balance vata, predominantly sweet, sour, and salty. You want to avoid um, things that are really astringent and bitter. So even though salads are generally good and might be good in the heat of the summer, salads and even cooked greens must be balanced with something. So for instance, you might put a sweet sauce, a heavy oily sauce um, with salt in it or some vinegar kind of sauce on greens that you eat even though they're cooked in the winter to offset the, um, the astringent and bitter taste of the greens. As the nutrition of the greens is good it's more the actual taste and the lightness of greens that isn't good for vata. So we want to eat more of the heavier, moist, and warm foods with digestive spices. And we'll talk more about foods later, so I won't go into that anymore. Just avoid cold foods, dry foods like crackers, popcorn, um, and avoid stimulants like caffeine and alcohol. Um, avoid junk food and microwave food. Those are specifically vata provoking. Soothing pitta. It's good to spend time out of doors in the fresh, cool air, especially in the mornings or in the evenings, not in the middle of the day when the sun is really bright. That's not the best for Pitta. That would be a better time for Vata to go out if they don't sweat too much. But the cool, being by cool lakes and streams and gardens and around flowers, those are all cooling to the Pitta nature. Be careful, don't overdo sunlight and or heat or hot tubs. Bathe in moonlight. Moonlight is uh, remedy for excess heat. So another thing to remember is if you're having your period, you're more pitta. So one story is that when I was graduating from my Ayurveda school, we did a fire ceremony and I sat near the fire because I was so excited. But unfortunately, I was also having my period. So it made me have more bleeding and more kinds of discomfort um, because I got too hot by the fire. So regular cooling and calming exercise and pittas will tend to push themselves, be ambitious and overdo it and go beyond half of capacity. One of the guidelines is that we don't want to exercise regularly to our full capacity because it will actually wear down and use up our reserves that are used to maintain our health. Um, and pittas also tend to get very competitive and it may, doing competitive sports may um, aggravate pitta rather than soothe it. So, um, doing more um, things like yoga, um, especially restorative yoga is good for vata and pitta people. Taking relaxing baths and invigorating showers, avoiding too hot of water. Now pittas don't want to add more heat, so not too hot. Drink vital cool water. Now we don't want to drink cold water anytime, no ice water, ice drinks, because what that does is it's going to turn off our digestion and that will aggravate pitta, even though they may have good digestion to start out with, their digestion may become out of balance. So um, always drinking water that's room temperature and that's what we mean by cool. <laughs> And then listening to or wading in a stream or a fountain is very good to soothe pitta. For aromatherapy, 
Um, sandalwood is one of the best, although it's quite pricey nowadays because it's the sandalwood trees are being destroyed when they get the essential oil and therefore they're not able to grow as fast. Um, so vetiver, henna, rose is excellent. Again, somewhat pricey, but you could get um, some mixtures that have rose in them. Lotus, jasmine, gardenia, honeysuckle, and iris. Those are good. A lot of times pittas don't like strong smells, so it's good to find something you like and just use it moderately so it doesn't overdo it for you. So you want to use music to calm and cool pitta. Again, don't use music to excite. Pitta needs to calm. So cooling and calming, calming mantras include Om, Sham, Som, Shum, and Shim. Use color therapy, cool whites, blues or greens and avoid very bright colors, especially red. Gray or brown is okay, but traditionally black is avoided. Um, for gems, a moonstone, a clear quartz crystals, emeralds, jades, peridots, blue sapphire, amethyst set in silver, and gem elixirs to work with those energies can be helpful to Pitta. So for Pittas, um, avoiding angry, jealousy, competition, and criticism are very important. Um, in fact, for all the doshas, the emotions are very powerful to bring imbalance. And any emotions that you have over and over again can bring imbalance, especially ones that are unhappy. Um, so pittas need to practice staying with sweetness of speech and forgiving and being content rather than always wanting something better than someone else or better than what they already have. Um, this working with the mind is really a crucial aspect because it has so much power over all our choices and our hormones and how we get along with other people. Pittas need to pay attention to themselves. They often become focused on something outside of themselves that they are trying to achieve. Self-inquiry is important to give up the tendencies that are very negative for them in their health and their relationships. Pittas don't need to get as much sleep as possible. <laughs> Pittas should have moderate amounts of sleep. So they could probably sleep, you know, six to eight hours a night. Um, always going to bed before 10 p.m. As I mentioned in the earlier classes, after 10 p.m., the pitta is aggravated if you're awake. If you're sleeping, the pitta is detoxing. But if you're awake, it will cause you to be more pitta. Um, and it's good for pittas to get up before sunrise. And they can massage with cooling coconut, sunflower, or, or ghee. Again, whole body massage, which we'll go through in class five. They can drink nourishing herbal infusions, especially raspberry nettles or red clover, which are pitta reducing. Um, and so they are, they can increase vata if you drink a lot of these, if you drink just one cup, but if you drink like two to three cups, which is a good um, amount to drink throughout the day for nutrition, 
uh, or to help balance like red raspberry, which is very important for the female organs. Um, nettles is very good for the blood and the liver. Um, and red clover is especially good for fertility, but it's also anti-cancer. Um, <clears throat> the tastes that reduce pitta are sweet, bitter, and astringent, and they can have fresh, raw foods and juices. So pitta could go to the juice bar. Um, vata should not go to the juice bar. Uh, raw juices are too concentrated for them to digest. If pitta has good digestion, then raw foods and juices is a, can be a good choice for them. They can eat cooked foods as well, but um, that's more cooling the raw foods and juices for them. Again, avoiding alcohol, which is very bad for the liver, the part of the seat of pitta. Chilies or hot spicy foods will increase fire. Um, tea, coffee, again, caffeine. Um, there's a tendency for pittas to love tea and coffee um, because of the bitter. And usually the bitter is good for them. It's the caffeine. So if you can get decaffeinated um, teas, or if you use like white tea or green tea, which aren't as full of caffeine as black tea, then those will be very good for pitta the coffee, the bitter taste in the tea, in the coffee that doesn't have caffeine. Also the same with chocolate. Chocolate that is, um, is, doesn't have too much caffeine. So if you limit how much chocolate and you get some that is organic and does, is dark and doesn't, has a lot of cacao, but not much sugar, that could be fine for pitta, um, as a treat. Fried and oily foods are especially bad, again, for the liver. Um, and we'll talk more about the foods again soon. Soothing kapha. So when we find that we have too much kapha going on, we again, we want to spend out of doors in the fresh air, but we want warmth. So if it's cold out, it's better not to be outside unless you can um, be sure you're not going to get cold. The problem is that you'll be breathing cold air and the lungs are part of the kapha area. So you'll be putting cold right into the lungs. If you breathe through a scarf, so it helps warm the air, that could work for cold days of walking outside, both for vata and kapha. Vata, um, really needs to always have a hat and a scarf when the weather is no longer summery. Even in the fall and the spring, it's probably better if you're a scarf around your neck. Vatas often have long necks that can be exposed to the cold air and will uh, give them problems. Being in the sun is good for kapha in general, that warm, hot sun. Um, so they need regular, strong aerobic exercise. Kaphas need to exercise every single day and to be healthy and start at a young age and continue. And they need those jumping kinds of yogas and need hot yoga. They are the ones that can do that. The pitta shouldn't do hot yoga because they're already too hot and vata shouldn't because they will become um, dehydrated usually and overwhelmed. But kaphas, that is made for kaphas. And um, so kaphas should go for the hot yoga, the competitive sports, that would be really good for kapha. Um, and then they should take not baths where they're sitting, but showers, invigorating showers that are hot and, and really waking them up 
and they should drink moderate amounts of warmed water. For um, aromatherapy, musk, camphor, cloves, cinnamon, cedar, frankincense, and myrrh are good for kapha. And they should use music to help stimulate them to move the energy. So they need exciting music, exciting movies, exciting things are usually good for kapha. The clearing and stimulating mantras are Aim, Hrim, Hum, and Om. So those mantras are especially good for Kapha when there's too much Kapha to help to soothe it. Color therapy, warm and bright colors, avoiding white, pale colors and some brown, gray, and black for kaphas. Um, gems are ruby, garnet, cat's eye, set in gold. Following a discipline and enduring physical hardship are good for kapha reducing. So that's where the sports and exercise is really helpful. Besides the physical effects, it helps the mind and that will keep kaphas from becoming lethargic in their mind. And it also helps them to develop um, detachment and avoid greed. Mental stimulation is also important just as physical stimulation. So learning new things, meeting new people, travel and pilgrimage is a form of kapha soothing. So for kaphas, traveling is really good. Um, less sleep helps reduce kapha. It may help kaphas to stay awake, but they should definitely avoid sleeping in the daytime is a really especially bad if you're kapha. And any kind of, any massage should be dry or with very stimulating essential oils added to the uh, massage oil and then followed by a hot stimulating shower. You don't want, kaphas don't need to relax so much as they need to be motivated. So the tastes that reduce kapha are pungent, bitter, and astringent. So they can have really spicy foods. And we'll talk more about this soon. Occasional fasting or skipping a meal can be good for kapha. They should probably do that at the end of the day rather than the beginning of the day. Um, and um, so avoiding cold drinks and foods as always and generally avoiding dairy because dairy is basically kapha <laughs> in a food form, any kind of dairy. And it has the things that aren't good for kapha like fat and slimy and cool generally. Um, so So that gives you some ideas about balancing the doshas. And of course, if you want to have some a program that is especially created for you, going to an Ayurvedic practitioner or having a consultation with me, either in person in Colorado or online, which I do as well, would allow us to come up with a whole plan that is specifically just for you that you can use. Um, and again, we always have to take into account the changing of the seasons and our condition and what's happening in our lives. We don't so by our constitution, but where we're out of balance. is in how our bodies are built and how our systems are nourished. 
watching that's our bro our doshas and so let's look at vata pitta and kapha foods All right. And again, if you want the screen to be expanded, check in the top um, corner. You'll see a little arrow, little thing with arrows. Just click on that and it will make it bigger. And then um, you'll be able to read the words more easily. So Vata Pitta Kapha Foods. So vata soothing qualities in general with food are warm, cooked, smooth, slimy, spiced for digestion, creamy, heavy. So sauces are really helpful to soothe vata, especially with vegetables, soups and stews and a crock pot can be your best friend because you can cook something all day long and when you come home it'll be warm and ready and cooked for you and that long slow cooking is very vata soothing for as far as food goes so with tastes the this pyramid shows well we're going to have every one of the tastes of course but we're going to emphasize the sweet, sour, and salty tastes for vata. And <clears throat> when we talk about the tastes, of course, very few foods are a pure one taste kind of thing. Everything has different tastes. And for instance, fruits and vegetables can have different tastes according to how they're grown, what season they're picked, if they're ripe or not. So, excuse me. <coughs> so, um, you can also use other things to, the spices can be very helpful um, to help balance. Condiments and spices are important to help balance foods that you want to eat that aren't necessarily the right flavor, but you want them for some other reason. So, some Vata increasing foods to generally avoid are sprouts. Sprouts are just too dry and airy. And um, I was so happy when I learned that Vata should not eat sprouts because I always tried to because they were supposed to be so healthy, but they aren't good for Vata. So I could say goodbye to those. Um, dried fruit is not so good. So if you're going to have dried fruit, you want to soak it um, in some warm water for a while to rehydrate it and soften it because it's hard and vata is already hard enough. We don't want more hardness and dryness. Um, then there are the foods that cause gas and vata is already airy and gassy. We don't need to add that. So if you do eat these foods, they should be well cooked and use spices, oils, and so forth, sauces to balance them. And of course, chips of any kind are really, really very good for vata. They're too dry. We can crave them because they're salty. And salt is is generally good for vata unless you have high blood pressure salt and a lot of people who are vata have a uh, adrenal depletion which in which case salt is helpful um, because the blood pressure may be too low and when it's too low then things don't work as well so salt um, you want to always have a good quality salt 
when you have salt. So vata soothing foods, we want to favor sweet foods. So honey is a warming sweetener if we want to use a added sweetener of some kind. Fruit, sweet fruit. And again, so for instance, apples, like this has a lot of different fruit in this picture of fruit on the top. Apples are generally actually not good raw. And, and any of the fruit that isn't real juicy, you would want to be sure to cook it. You don't want it to be cold, like out of the refrigerator. You want it to be room temperature. Um, but apples you would want to cook because in pears, unless they're very juicy and ripe um, and soft and, and wet, that otherwise they should also be cooked. Um, peaches are generally good um, and berries. Grapes are good in the summer. Grapes are very, very ultra sweet. They're one of the big sweeties and um, in the summer they're very cooling. So the problem with the sweet taste is that it tends to be cooling if it's real extreme. Like I said, honey is the hottest of the cool of the sweeteners. So um, that's why it's generally better for vata. Um, bananas can be good if they're ripe. Um, they're heavy to digest and so you might want to add some cinnamon which is heating um, to the bananas to kind of help with the heaviness digest to digest. Um, whole grains are sweet, they're considered sweet. So rice, um, quinoa, if you can eat wheat, wheat is very nourishing. Um, oats, they're all good vata soothing foods, especially like oatmeal is a very vata soothing foods. Again, it can be heavy, which helps soothe the vata, but it may make it harder to digest. So you want to put some spices in with the oatmeal to make it more digestible. And then uh, mashed sweet potatoes, that's really uh, a nice food choice for vata. Now these are just some examples again, um, but you want to think about sweetness, natural sweetness for vata. Vata soothing foods also favor sour, so sauerkraut, so even though cabbage is generally gas producing when it's um, fermented, fermented foods are good. So pickles, any kind of pickled vegetable, again, not cold out of the refrigerator. It's better to have something warm. That's why sauerkraut can be warm. It could be sour. Um, and then of course, citrus is good. You can add some citrus to water and sip that throughout the day at room temperature. Um, if you don't have warm water to sip. And again, like some of these can be sweet. So sometimes um, oranges are sweet as well as sour. So they're, they can be good, but again, they're raw. So um, being aware that you don't want to overdo things that are raw. So another taste that is good for vata is salt. And again, as I mentioned, salt is not good if you have high blood pressure for it may make your blood pressure worse. But many vata people or people who have high vata have adrenal depletion and salt can actually help their blood pressure work better. So olives are good salty food. <coughs> cheese um, is usually salted and cheese is heavy as are olives. They're heavier foods. So those are salty type of foods. The pitta soothing qualities are cooling, bland or mildly spiced, raw, 
dry, non-oily. So cilantro is your friend. If you go to a restaurant and they have spicy food and that's all that's really available to you, um, adding cilantro will help balance out that spiciness. So ask for extra cilantro. And crackers, dry, drier things are good. But again, we want to avoid salt because salt for pitta will heat them and, and not be good. Salt is only good for vatas with low blood pressure or normal blood pressure. For pittas and kaphas, salt is not good. And many of the crackers and chips and so forth are salted and that isn't as healthy for pitta, especially if large amounts are eaten. The most important foods to balance pitta are bitter, sweet, and astringent. These are some foods that increase pitta. Alcoholic drinks because it works on the liver. Spicy um, salsas or any tomatoey foods. Um, tomato and citrus. Acidic kinds of foods like vinegar will also increase pitta. And then nuts because there's so much oil and oil in general will increase pitta, just like when you put oil on a fire, it will increase the fire. And spicy things like garlic, scallions, onions, those will increase pitta as well. So pitta soothing foods favor the bitter. And again, dandelion greens is an excellent bitter green endives, watercress, but any kinds of greens in general are what pittas should eat every day. Plenty of greens. <laughs> and for them, the greens should be fairly naked. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of butter or a little tiny bit of oil, but not much because it's you don't want to add oil to them very much. Um, and bitter chocolate is good as a bitter flavor also. So sweet foods, again, similar to vata, but not exactly the same. Because for fruit, you don't eat sweet citrus fruit. You could eat bananas. You can eat blueberries are very cooling. So in the summertime, blueberries are an excellent fruit for pitta soothing cooling of the fire. And for a sweetener for pitta, we would recommend maple syrup because that is the most cooling of the sweeteners. Sweet potatoes would work again because the mashed sweet potatoes have some, um, <coughs> have some heavier creams and butter and stuff in them. The um, non-creamy ones might work better for pitta if you're eating them very frequently. And then again, grains are really good for pitta. Oh, I forgot to mention that meat is very pitta um, provoking. And so pittas should not eat meat so much. And if they do, they should eat more leaner meat that's not as fatty. So like chicken and fish would be better for pitta. Um, for vatas, vatas often crave more grounding. And heavy meat can help with that if they are open to eating that. So both um, pitta and, and vata, if they digest dairy, dairy can be good for them. Um, dairy, pure dairy is very soothing to pitta. However, yogurt is sour. Um, so unless it's really fresh homemade yogurt, pitta isn't doing so well with eating yogurt all the time. Um, it's go good for vata, 
but not for kapha. No dairy for kapha. So other pitta soothing foods are beans. So these are chickpeas or other kinds of beans are especially good for pitta. Again, beans are something that vata should avoid because they tend to cause gas. Um, and if they're used for vata beans, you would want to use smaller beans, not these big chickpeas, but maybe um, red lentils are, are good or um, the other kinds of mung beans that are split and hulled, the yellow mung beans. Um, so other astringent tastes are um, the pomegranate and okra is both astringent and bitter. Okra is good with um, <clears throat> vata. It's good for vata as well because it's very slimy. And so if it's spiced well, okra can be good for vata because it is so slimy when it's cooked. <coughs> so kapha soothing qualities, again, are lightness, dryness, warmth. So again, the greens are really good. They're so light and dry for kapha and crackers and things that are very light and dry are good. So the taste for balancing kapha is generally pungent or spicy, bitter, and astringent. So these are foods that increase kapha. Um, bananas, because they're so heavy of a fruit, if you're going to eat fruit, which is less good for kapha because it's sweet, you should eat something that isn't heavy, like blueberries might be good, or um, berries might be a good choice, yes. The meat, again, is heavy. Popsicles are cold, cold foods, dairy foods. And then like um, macaroni and cheese, those are, <laughs> that's a very kapha increasing food choice. So that gives you some ideas of what kapha should avoid. Kapha soothing foods are Kapha is the one that should have fiery foods. Vata shouldn't because fiery foods might feel good because they're warming and you might think, oh good, yeah, let's have some warming foods. But the problem is it will make you sweat. It will make you lose fluids so it's drying. So for kapha, that's excellent. Kapha needs to dry, it needs to warm up. So kapha should go for all that spicy Thai food and all kinds of... The Mexican food, you have to watch out because of all the dairy that's usually in it. But if you get without the cheese, the beans and the um, spices are good for kapha. And corn is a somewhat heating grain. So corn is a, is a good choice of a grain for kapha. Bitter. Again, for kapha, same as pitta, so they can have their bitter chocolate and, and um, for foods, again, the astringent foods like um, <clears throat> pitta has, a lot of beans and the pomegranate and okra especially maybe breaded okra, which is a little drier <coughs> if it's not too oily from being fried, deep fried. Um, yeah, so I hope that gives you some ideas for self-care to soothe your different doshas as you're learning more about them. You can experiment. And like I said, the best would be to actually have a consultation and find out what works for you right now and go from there. So if you'd like to get more information from me, my email is wisewomanhood at gmail.com. I have a Facebook page, Wise Womanhood, and also my YouTube channel.
at Wise Womanhood. And my website is wisewomanhood.com. So get in touch if you want to learn more or if you'd like to have a consultation. And on my website, you can sign up for a free introduction on the phone with me where we'll talk about what's going on with you and I can give you some idea of what kind of plan we might be able to come up with that can help you. So have a day or evening wherever you may be and I hope you'll join us for our next um, recording which is class number four on digestion and I'm pretty sure you're going to learn some new things about digestion from an Ayurvedic point of view, which means that digestion includes not only your food digestion, but digestion within all the cells of your body, all the tissues. So I'll look forward to sharing more with you in the future. Take good care. Bye-bye.